beautiful morning. Oh, I know. Well, okay, maybe your day isn't quite so beautiful. Maybe it's a little tough because, you know, it's been like snow, you know, it's dumped on you. And the winter things that you thought weren't going to happen, you know, all of a sudden went whoosh. And they come crashing in on your world or suddenly a storm came, you know, and it kind of like exploded on you. You weren't prepared because even though you lived in an area that has, you know, severe weather, you kind of didn't plan on, you know, this tornado really hitting your home and it wiped you out. You know, but you're alive. But that's not the important thing. You know, you you kind of been devastated, and you wonder, well, God, where were you? Well, I want to kind of give you a little hope because you know, that's what God does is that He brings hope to the hopeless. Now, He doesn't save you so that you could just, oh, I'm going to avoid hell, and in the meantime, I have to suffer. You know, and life is miserable, and it all sucks. No, not exactly, because you see, God intended to protect you from certain circumstances of life. You know, even Jesus talked about homes that get destroyed. He said, if you do these things of mine, you know, you'll be like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And when the storms of life came, you know, and beat upon it, it stood. Now, I don't know what kind of construction you had, and if you were living in a tornado-prone environment, I don't know about you, but if I was living in a tornado-prone environment, I'd get a tornado-proof house because I would want to plan for floods, nah, fire, nah, tornadoes. <laughs> you see, it's kind of like, instead of having just like tornado insurance, which is, that's kind of nice, you know, I mean, I'm glad that you get the money for having the wisdom to pay that extra money to somebody who's going to use that money to protect your home, you know, so you get a benefit from it, but it's going to pay you to replace all your prized possessions that you kind of got wrapped up on, like your photos and all those other things. Not so much worth monetary value, is it? So you see, if I had a home that was in a tornado area, I kind of want tornado-proof homes. Same thing like if I was in a flood environment, I'd kind of want flood-proof homes. You know, kind of like the house that I live in, you know, like my body. I kind of want to have something going for me in case when I die. I kind of have something in store for me, you know, like, hey, I got somewhere to go because I wouldn't want to be disembodied and wind up like, Ooh, this corruption's going down there. I don't want to go with it. I want to go where it's supposed to be. So I kind of like to build my house, the body I live in, this temple of the Holy Spirit, so to speak, kind of like destruction proof. You know, I like to get it focused in on the right things, not the wrong. You know, the hope of his calling, the hope of salvation, the hope that we have in Jesus. Because if I kind of like live in an earthquake place. Oh my God, I do. And I kind of know that all these things are passing away. Oh my God, they're wearing out. And I know that this body is going to perish. Oh my God, it's failing me. Then I would like to have kind of a confidence in where I put my hope. Because Hope deferred isn't hope, but hope assured is salvation. So I kind of like have to kind of sit down and look at my life as kind of like a negotiable thing, you know. It's kind of like, well, God, let's let's get real here, man. You know, you say you've got a plan, and you say you've got a way, and you say you've got a will. I want to know what I'm going to get out of it. So you tell me where I'm going to be, and I'll tell you whether I want to go there. Because, frankly, I don't see this kind of like, you know, world lasting much longer, and I don't see this house, you know, kind of like surviving, you know, some kind of major earthquake, or flood, or famine, or fire, so maybe I need to kind of like put it all together and get a grip on what you've been telling the world for a long time now. Well, it's kind of like this plan. You see, there's a story behind this plan. My wife, 
<laughs> God bless her. <laughs> yes. She's a blonde, so you gotta forgive her. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist that. Ah, turn the right cheek. Ah, turn the left cheek. Ah, yeah. Ah, forehead. Ah, back head. Anybody watch NCIS? <laughs> um, my wife, who is a blonde, <laughs> God bless her, you know, because she's gonna see this, I'm gonna get killed. But she's cute, she's adorable, you know. She grew up in, you know, kind of like back east, you know, and she had a house, you know, and a home, and raised kids, you know, and all that stuff. But when she had plants, you know, one of the plants she never grew were bulbs. Okay? <laughs> she told me that just last night, and I'm going, Okay, Lord, you know, do I get to use this? <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> I'm like you. I want to uh, take the knife, you know. Kidding. Just kidding. But she never grew bulbs. So we had gone out and, you know, we were at, I don't know if it was a Costco or if it was like a Walmart or someplace cheap. <laughs> you know me. I'm not frugal. I'm cheap. <laughs> so we had seen these bulbs, you know, and I was like, Lord, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's been warm, so let's plant them. So we got the bulbs and we planted them. I think you see what the results are. Yeah, they bloomed. Now, this is what hope is like, you know, when you plant your faith in hope in God, then he causes, if it's planted in the good soil, to grow and to blossom. Your life is like that, you see. You are exactly, you are exactly, you are, you, not me, no, all of us. We're not like this bulb, this bloom, this plant, this planter. You see, when you're put in good soil, you know, and you water it, you know, and you give it sunshine that you can see streaming through behind me, you know, and you see some plants that are growing around me, then you begin to kind of like grow up into the container that God wants you to be in. You're kind of like protected, and you know. The good gardener will move him around, you know, put it in the best place for it to grow, you know. Not too much cold so it doesn't get frost damage. Not too much light so it doesn't get burned. You know, but just right so it grows. Now, after it blossoms, when it goes, you know, shiny, <laughs> then at some point in time, it wilts because the seasons come. You know the seasons. Seasons of your life. You know, when you were young and... Then when you kind of get middle age and then you have kids and they get older and they move away, you know, and then you're older or you go through a divorce or you go through whatever circumstances of life, you know, those seasons of life that you go through, then the plant will wilt. Well, you see, my wife is looking forward to this because she told me that. Now, I, I grow bulbs, you know, I just kind of like, you know, let them die off or whatever and then dig them up, you know, and save them and dry them out, you know, for the next summer and then, you know, or leave them in the ground they grow again, you know, because I've had lots of gardens in different places and when I had houses or I don't, I don't have houses until whenever I was gardening somewhere or somebody, someplace in time. But this year, I guess we're doing this with this container is that we're going to cut them off when they're done and keep the bulbs because, you see, next year they'll grow back. They'll continue to grow because... Once we put them after their season of being dormant, they will grow again. You get the picture here? God wants your life to go through seasons, that you will blossom in your season. And though you may be in challenges right now and trials, and maybe it's winter where you're at, maybe there's snow on the ground, you know, and maybe your plants just haven't bloomed yet, I'm here to give you hope. Mine are. So I get to take my plants and tell you about life. Hey, guess what, dude? Your plants are going to grow. Yes, they will. And you know what? When that snow's gone, when those trials are gone, when your house has been destroyed, you know, and it's kind of like all the foundation wiped out, do me a favor. When you clear out all the ground, you know, go back and look and see if you have any bulbs that bloom this spring. Take that as a hope. Take that as a confidence. Take that as an assurance from God that guess what? Your light is going to bloom again if you lost your home in some tornado or some devastation because, yeah, it's a little tough, but you know what? Jesus said it wasn't going to be a picnic. He said it was going to be in the world. You would have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I will overcome, or I have overcome the world, and so will you. Guess what? You'll bloom. You will. I tell you, these guys are going to bloom. Now, maybe if I don't take care of them, 
they could rot. You know, the bulbs after I get done with them, you know, I could probably, you know, keep them too moist or something or not dry enough and maybe they won't bloom. And maybe some of you won't. It's up to you, really. But I can tell you this. Hope in the Lord and trust in Him will always bring about His plan and purpose. He will always accomplish that which He's designed a pot and that which He's made the soil and that which He's created the bulb to do His purposes. As surely as the sun rises and as the darkness comes for night, <laughs> moon rises, as the sun rises you know, and sets, and as the night comes and the darkness overwhelms the world and as it comes every single day, hey, check out the plant, man. That's what you're like. It's going to happen. You will be blessed. So be encouraged because it's not always just something that's going wrong, but sometimes it's just part of life part of eternal life that's going to go on forever and ever and ever and ever with God in the midst of it because God is in you. Have no fear. Fear is evil. Perfect love casts out fear. There is no room for fear in the heart which I dwell. Fear destroys hope. It cannot exist where love is, or where faith is. Fear is the curse of the world. Man is afraid. He's afraid of poverty. He's afraid of loneliness. He's afraid of unemployment and afraid of sickness. Many, many are man's fears. Nation is afraid of nation. Wars are created over fears. People are afraid of someone they don't know or they don't understand. People are afraid that you're not following the right will or the right way. People are afraid in their religious ideas. People have fears. Fight fear as you would a plague. Turn it out of your lives and your home. Perfect love casts out fear. For if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, mind, and strength, you have no time for fear. Be not afraid. For I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Fight it singly. Fight it together. Never inspire fear or cause others to fear anything. Have them trust in the Lord with all their heart, leaning not to their own understanding, in all their ways acknowledging Him and letting Him direct their path. But don't cause them to fear. Fear is not God's will. It is an evil ally if you choose fear. Fear of punishment or fear of blame or fear of being left behind. No work that employs this enemy of mine is work for me. Banish it. There must be another and better way. Ask me and I will show it to you. Today, choose you this day which way you will go. You can do what you want to do, really. And I'm sure you will. But you know, I don't know about you, but me, with this house and the house that I live in, I'm kind of like, you know, making sure that it's built upon a rock so that way I kind of have it prepared for earthquakes, famines, floods, disasters, snow, spring, summer, winter, fall. Because I'm more like this pot, you know. It's not that I like to smoke it. It's not that I like to be potted. It's not that I like to get stoned because I don't do any of those. But I like where God has planted me, wherever that may be, because once I've planted this this year and it's bloomed here, I may take this bulb once it's been cut off and done with its blooming in one spot and take it and plant it somewhere else, even in another pot or another place, because wherever God plants me, that's where I want to grow. So if you bloom where you're planted and show forth the blossoms of your life to all those around you, God might send you a hummingbird or someone who will appreciate you or someone who will comment on you, someone who will speak to you words of gentleness and kindness that will look at the glory of what you are and appreciate how God has made you just the way you are. What a beautiful thing a plant is. It can't go out and get surgery. It can't do anything except bloom as it was called to do and chosen to do and designed to do. The glory of God is 
revealed in how he made you just the way you are as he did the plants for so he clothed the valleys with plants will he not take care of you O ye of little faith fear not for he is with you let him guide you in all of your life and be just like this maybe you haven't grown bulbed plants before and maybe this is the first time in your life that you've heard something like that where you could oh you mean the things that are cut off in my life are going to cause me to grow even stronger in life the things that I thought this year that are gone now are going to produce a benefit next year because God is going to use me in some way maybe you have been like my wife and never seen how God's economy works but I can tell you this that when God cuts off a plant the base that which is inside gets stronger and the roots get more committed and content to be sustenance and pull from the soils everything that they need and then when you've gone through those experiences enough time you not only learn how to be a bulb you learn how to grow plants like this so that they will blossom in their time. Wouldn't you like to be a gardener today? Or would you like to be gardened? The choice is yours. Maybe it works both ways. Maybe God is doing something today you never dreamed of.